Hey guys, it's Yo Bud Man here, back with another video, and uh, today we are actually going to be doing something a little bit different. So, as you all know, with me I have a special guest, and you all know him. He is the one and only Dark Isaac. You said the name right. Let's go, champ. Yes. All right. So, would you like to tell everyone what's going to be happening in this video? All right. Sure. Uh, yeah. A while back, I did an interview with Yo Bud Man following his series, The Seven Days. Yes, he did. And up to this point, I have done a lot <laughs> over the last while. I started YouTube in 2015. I mean, Yo Bud Man 2017. We did. I've been doing music since 20, early 2019. Yes, he did. So now he is going to be interviewing me. That's right. So you've said it, and um, yes. Yeah, so I'll be interviewing Dark Isaac about basically like his his music, his YouTube, and basically just about him in general. So yeah, we're gonna hope that this goes well. So yeah, what do you think? Um, I mean, yeah. I as I, I we talked about this right before we started. I am overly open on camera. Like I just did a I did a podcast for my five year anniversary anniversary of YouTube. But I sort of just said literally everything. Okay. So. Yes, I would just like to say, we all know that like you're the journalist. You like to ask questions, so I apologize in advance if like these questions like aren't <laughs> what you're expecting, or like if they're just not good enough. But you know, I tried my best. So, yes, hopefully we are. I'm, we are I both. can't believe you just referred to me as a journalist, but I will take it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, and we'll have that same rule that we had in mind, where if you don't like a question, you can you can uh, just say pass. And we can just move on. Uh, I, they're all pretty good, though. I think you will answer them all. So I don't think we'll be having a problem with that. Um, so, yeah, if you don't have any other questions, then I think we shall be good to go. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, here we go. So just the categories are basically just like we've got questions about music and we've got stuff about your YouTube. So, yeah, away we go. So question one, and I think the most important of all, is what made you want to start YouTube? Oh, Wow. Um, well, uh, Already I'd say struggling. What, I, no, it's, there's just a lot that goes into it, to be totally honest. Again, I'm very honest, so I'm going to just answer this as yeah. fully honest as possible. Just, just do whatever. Say whatever. I've been very honest on social media and in other ways that um, I've struggled with mental health in the past. And I first started YouTube at nine years old, and I'd say that's the age where it started getting pretty bad for me okay and uh at the, at the time i was watching youtubers like markiplier jack septicai like the biggest let's players at the time yeah really the only things that i really did in my free time back then was watch those youtubers and play games on my own so i yeah i sort of just i wanted to do something that brought me a lot of joy and that led me to do my first youtube video uh which i posted may 26th 2015 and i just really enjoyed it so i kept doing more and more from there I'm happy I started, and I'm very happy I never quit. Yes, this I'm... This definitely brought a lot of happiness into my life. Yes, I'm very happy too. We all are. And yes, I forgot to say this. I There are also some questions here that I also, that I know the answer to already, just like what you did with me. So don't think that I forgot these answers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. This is just for everyone to hear. All right, so the second question is, um, all right, so what kind of content did you uh, use to post on your old channels? Oh uh, yeah, um, for about two years, I only did gaming videos. Um, I played. I started off with games on the 3DS because I was a big Nintendo nerd. And then mm -hmm. I moved on to a lot of games online and PC games. Yeah, I did that for about two years. And then I started doing um, story told series uh, because I was a fan of uh, McJuggernuggets back when he used to get more than 30k views. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was just, I started getting really into that. So I would, uh, yeah, I started playing characters doing that. I did that for nearly all of 2017. I uh, moved on to, yeah, and then eventually got to a point where I was doing like vlogs, gaming challenges, skits, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, and I definitely want to get more into that uh, eventually. Uh, right now, I'm sort of focusing on gaming content and music, but I would like to, I'd say once the quarantine days are over, I'm going to have more stuff like that again. Yes, we will talk about some of that stuff later on all right so the next question all right so since i've known you you've uh, you've had quite a few channels that you've created you, you you never had just one you've had so many so i would like to ask you how many channels did you used to have slash oh, you still have today? <laughs> list all of them okay For, i started i had my kirby amazing channel it was actually a first called ian malleton 
which All is right. my full birth name. Um, and I changed it to Kirby the Amazing. I thought of that in one second because, I don't know, I, I said it like a magician. What I'm Kirby the Amazing. Um, All right. I'm, I, I was nine. Don't judge. All right. Uh, That's fine. Yeah, and then I made a Kirby the Amazing second channel. Why did I do that? I couldn't tell you. I don't know. All right. Um, I, it died immediately. I don't know how many channels I've had in my whole life, but, yeah, I anyway. <laughs> eventually started the Stolen Studios channel. Yeah, we all, um, we've all seen that one. Which um, now is for the podcast, but it was originally supposed to be for uh, trailers and updates on series. Um, I had a I had a little channel not connected to Curve the Amazing called Mobile Gameplays. Oh yeah, um, it was the one where you had that. That one. is the lamest thing I've ever done because literally all it was was it was my first. I had I got my first Android phone, and this is before iPhones had recording built into it. So I wow. was really excited about being able to film vi- videos on my phone. That's why I started that. It was very stupid. Yeah. Um, but it was easy, that's for sure. And then um, eventually got to a point where I wanted to leave the Kirby the Amazing channel um, for various reasons. My first idea was a channel called In Entertainment. Very creative. Yep. I made a few videos on there. Still wasn't really happy with it. The thing is, though, I'm, that channel, Ian Entertainment, okay. is the Dark Isaac channel now. It's oh. still the same account. All right. Yeah, it's the Dark Isaac channel, which is uh, now strictly for music. Yeah. Uh, there was Dark Isaac TV, which is where I was going to start doing videos until I uh, sunk that ship. Uh, um, um, uh, God, there's so many. Yeah. Uh, my name is Isaac is what I have now for uh, things that aren't music. Uh, right now, it's just gaming, which I'm really enjoying. I'm going to get back to that soon. Yeah. Um, am I missing any? Can you think? And, uh, and, channel uh, KTA. Channel KTA is what eventually was the Curb the Amazing second channel for only story told series. Um, yeah. And you know that's. Although I left those channels behind, that one actually had a purpose. And let's not yeah, forget. Yeah, I've had many, but oh. right now I'm only running Dark Isaac, and that's just for music. Uh, and Stolen Studios, where I have the podcast, My Name is Isaac, is just for videos. So, you know, they all have their place now, and I'm making sure I don't branch away from that anymore. Yes, and let's not forget about Kirby the Amazing Toys, the other one. Oh, I <laughs> forgot about that one. Yes, um, I <laughs> around the same time as the other YouTubers I mentioned, I was a fan of a guy named Super Mario Logan, who does like videos with puppets and plush toys and tells stories through them and makes characters through them. And I want to yeah. do something similar. Okay, <laughs> it wasn't good. I'm glad it's gone. All right. But yeah, I mean yeah. it was still fun, and you know, YouTube's meant to be fun. But yes, you are right. I think that's all of them. Yeah. So we actually have a uh, the uh, next question here is actually what you were mentioning before. All right, so, and that would be, uh, why did you feel the need to uh, create a whole new channel when your old one, Kirby the Amazing, was uh, doing significantly well? Yeah, um, it's actually pretty um, hard to leave it in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, like, I had, yeah, I had been doing it for years, and I, w- I had to really make sure it's something I wanted to do, which is why I still had the channel up when I was starting to move on. But me, it just really felt like, there was, there was a few things that went into it, but for me, it just really, it didn't want to rebrand the channel. I just, I didn't want to rebrand that channel because it's, and you know, I actually do plan, I completely forgot about this, but I just thought about it this week, actually. Okay. I want to rename it Kirby the Amazing, re-upload the profile picture, and put up my favorite videos and just leave it alone. Not all of them, not all 600, but I just want to put up my favorite videos and just leave it alone. I didn't want to rebrand because there were so many memories still on there, still connected to it, and I feel like I started when I was nine, and I was there as a very young kid. And I feel like moving on from what I was doing on that channel just wouldn't have felt right than the change of tone, heart, and character. Um, and then also it's just how brutal YouTube was towards that channel. Oh, wow. Um, in, uh, I don't remember, was it 2018? It, was, it may have been 2018. It was, yeah, it was definitely 2018 when YouTube uh, demonetized the life out of my channel. Oh, okay. Uh, they started doing demonetization in 2016 and 17, which, def- which definitely hit me a few times. But then in, I think it was early, I'm pretty sure it was too early 2018, or it just, that channel just got really attacked by the demonetization system. Yeah. And uh, that definitely made me worry about, you know, branching out into adult humor. I have made over 600 videos on Kirby Amazing. Not once. In my years of running that channel, did I ever say one cuss word on that channel? Oh wow! Not once. That's surprising. Not once. Yeah, that's and cool. that's why I. And that also just made me worry. Like, what if I started acting different on that channel? But yeah, I just sort of wanted to leave those memories alone and branch out to something else because I didn't want to let my previous work hold me back from future work. And I think that I still do think that was the right decision because 
it would hurt more to rebrand that channel than to leave it. Yeah, yeah, so, I guess. Yeah, that's that's my long answer. <laughs> well, then, thank you for that answer. All right, so now we're gonna actually start to get into your music stuff. So we'll be asking you some right. questions about that. What made you want to write songs in the first place, and um, why specifically um, rap with a the dark theme? I'm actually, for a long time, I was one of the weirdest people ever okay. because I did not listen to music until her like mid 2018 or early 2018. I literally just didn't listen to music. Huh. Okay. I don't know That's why. I just I never bothered to like explore music, so I just never got into it. But in early 2018, I started listening to more hip hop. I'm actually into a lot of different kinds of music. Oh yeah. But I started listening to hip hop a lot more in early 2018. So yeah, it was. I honestly don't have a good reason for like why I started specifically with rap. But okay. uh, the artists that influenced me the most were artists uh, Dax, XXX, and Logic. Those three artists definitely influenced my sound at the beginning the most. But uh, yeah, uh, in 20, 2018 was one of the weirdest years for me ever. Yeah, I, I, I would say that. Um, yeah, it was my like complete fall down from YouTube. And honestly, it's like I talked about this in my podcast as well. It's it was a really confusing time because I wanted to start doing YouTube again. And I wanted to have I wanted to start using my creativity again. I literally just didn't know how to start up again. Okay. Um, so yeah, I. I guess the dark theme that you mentioned, okay. which I have definitely experimented with a lot of the time, sort of started the same way as like, it, it, music sort of started in a very similar way as YouTube did for me. Um, I was just sort of in a bit of a slump again at that point in my life. For my way of venting was YouTube videos, and then it became music. So that's sort of why I wrote down what I wrote down. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, it got to a point where I wrote five songs, and that's what became my first EP. I started working on it late 2018, it came out early 2019. You know, those are the artists that influenced my sound. That's sort of where the dark theme came from that I've definitely experimented with a lot more over time. And that's sort of just how I started overall. I see. All right, so this is like about the process of you, of you making your songs. How long does it usually take you to come up with, with the uh, lyrics for a single song? It could take literally any time, from 10 minutes to two weeks, like literally. Um, okay. It just depends on whether or not you want to sit down and finish the song or if you want to start it and come back to it later. Um, I'd say the song that took the least amount of time to write was my song Blood because it got very repetitive after the first verse. Very um, much. I might as well release this little teaser. I plan to release a Blood Part 2 oh, because okay. I love the beginning of Blood. But I just did it so fast that it completely fell apart. Like, I think my first, like, 16 bars were so cool and then I just let it fall apart. So I would love to redo that. But yeah, that song took about five to ten minutes to write one morning. I sort of, as, yeah, I sort of just wrote down some cool punch lines and then just let it go. Um, I'd say uh, December 8th is when uh, Juice World passed away. Oh, yeah. I made a tribute song for him the day of, so I finished that very fast. Um, but yeah, and then there's songs where it's like, you start writing it and then you just want to leave it alone for a bit and you come back to it later. Yeah, oh, okay. it's hard to put a time on something like that, but yeah, yeah it's it, it, it can take any period of time. And also, if you want to like, you know, with hip hop, a lot of like lyrical stuff you can do with it if you want to put a lot of time into like uh flows punch lines and like wordplay you can yeah. put a lot of time into that for sure all right so the uh next question we have here is uh what software did you use to uh like edit your songs and how long does it usually take to edit one song and um has this software changed over time it has very much changed over time okay. because um i had no experience with music in the beginning. Like, I cannot stress how little experience I had with music when I first started. Oh. I did was, I used a video editing software and exported it as an audio file. That is what I did. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. Please. I mean, if that's your only option when you start off, go ahead. That was definitely my only option. Okay. Just don't do that. The thing is, the software I use, um, I got from... It's actually funny. My mom had a friend who got music software she said and she was able to give it to me for free oh okay. and um i was very fortunate in that situation but what, what i like just before i answer this question it's fullest something i always want to stress is if you want to start working on something you really don't need much to work with it like again i started youtube with an iphone 4 and my 3ds i filmed the screen and played luigi's mansion you really don't got to do all that much yeah i have music maker from magics that's what i have now uh, yeah, and obviously compared to video editing, it's way easier to mix and master the songs. Yeah, that's what I use, and at the beginning, I literally just had to use video editing. So 
software and export it as audio. It kind of works, but it's not going to have the crisp sound that you want. <laughs> exactly. All right. So then, the next question we have here is: What kind of microphones have you used during the duration of your rapping career, if you would call it that? You know what? If when you're editing this, you want a picture of it, I have my very first microphone. Okay. It is almost entirely made of plastic. It is hilarious. <laughs> um, no, it's it's really funny. It was okay. about ten fifteen dollars. Um, All right. I believe I got it off Amazon. I but um, yeah, it was run, it was one of the cheapest mics I've ever seen. Uh, it's all it's all plastic. It has this red long cord, and that's what I used for my first two EPs. So you can hear how bad it is. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I've had and ever since my very first full length album back in May of last year, I had the same one. I just the only difference is that I've been able to use my software that I have now to add like our crisp sounds on the vocals. I've also worked with Auto Tune now and then. So yeah, um, the mic is still the same though. I'm using oh. it right now. Okay, um, nice. When it's called define technology again i'm not good with i'm so bad at like picking out technology i'm not good with that stuff at all but yeah it does work great and i don't make a lot of money or anything so i haven't seen the need to get a new one yet so yeah okay <laughs> all right so the next one quite an entertaining one which is uh what were your thoughts when you first heard yourself rapping for the first time that is an interesting question i'd never even really thought about that well i mean for me about like how good something actually is um, obviously, you want to do the best you can, but for me, it's always been, like, as long as I'm improving, it's okay. Oh, okay. Um, so, like, yeah, I released my first many projects knowing that they weren't very good, but I had never done that before. So, you know, for me, again, it was just all about improving. My thoughts were really, this is fun, but I, I need to improve. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. That's really all it was. Like, um, I definitely better with lyrics as opposed to actually rapping the lyrics faster okay but again and you know i just i take i actually take music a lot less seriously than some of my other things i just do it the most often uh, because like you know i blog as well and like writing is something i'm really really good at and yeah. uh, youtube is something i've been doing a long time so i'm really good at it now yeah, music sure. is, was just a really fun thing to do so you know i know that i'm not great I still, I know I'm still not a great, great rapper, but you know, it's about, for me, it's about the improvements, having fun. You know, if somebody likes it, then that's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I released Devil on Your Shoulder knowing that it wasn't good. Like I did, but it was fun to put together. I just wanted to get better and better from there. And I believe I have. And that's what matters most to me. Like I think I've put together some good songs, but you know, I put, I put, I'm very happy I did as much as I did last year music wise because. I improved a lot in just one year, so yeah. hopefully that answered the question. <laughs> I think it did, yeah. All right, so then the next question is, how did you expect your first few albums uh, to do when they came out? Well, on my, on my original channel, I still got very few views, so on a brand new channel, I didn't expect that much. I've honestly never, ever put out anything expecting it to do amazing. But yeah, as you say, when I, when I put out my first few EPs and albums, I didn't... I. I honestly don't have much of an answer for that. I just didn't really expect much of it. I just wanted to get it out and see. And, you know, obviously when I get a response, I like to see it. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, I never expect – whenever something happens that's big, I don't expect it. Like, again, we picked a good time to do this interview because I just got a song that got over 30,000 streams. Yeah, like, I've heard. I would have never in a million years predicted that. I would have never predicted that. Yeah. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes yeah. it's nothing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this next question, I think you're – not sure what you're going to think of it, and and uh, I think you're going to be surprised that I didn't forget about this. What happened to your forgotten albums, Sins, Fear, and True Evolution, that were listed on your website? How <laughs> bloody hell <laughs> do you even see that? <laughs> do you care to go into that? I mean, yeah, I will. I just like... <laughs> wow, and that's also a really good follow-up question, because uh, when I was playing the albums... When I was playing the album Fear, specifically, okay. I thought that would be my best chance of doing at getting something big because yeah i'll just explain all of them yeah. sins was gonna be seven songs all named after the seven deadly sins yeah i saw Herb that was going to be 10 songs which name of the song was going to be it was the no it was the top 10 most common phobias uh so yeah uh in fear there was like uh there was spiders there was holes there was lightning what i did with those three canceled projects was something i've never ever done before which is plan the track list before making any songs and that's sort of what lead me to cancel it which was I sort of found myself not exactly enjoying the process 
of making them. Like, you know, um, I, I do everything I do for myself. Well, you know, if people like them, that's great, but I do what I do to have a good time doing it. So if I'm not enjoying something, I'm just going to have to bail on the project. So, um, yeah, True Evolution. Yeah, what's up with was, that one? That one, like, was really different. I'm not totally honest. A few of the song concepts in there I definitely could bring back, but uh, a lot of what happened in that album uh, revolved around an ex-girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> so that's sort of why that's that's sort of why I had that's my simple answer for that one being tossed in the bin. All right. But yeah, but sins and fear, I definitely think were smart concepts. Fear, I think, was a lot more interesting, and I could definitely work with something similar again. I don't know how you even remembered those, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, fear and sins were definitely interesting concepts that, you know, I could mess with again at some points. For sure, yeah. All right, this next question is pretty good. Uh, how did you meet some of your uh, producers and, like, people you featured in songs? Like, were they people you knew or, like, did you just meet them online somehow? Actually, I, I don't speak to a lot of producers because um, a lot of producers, of course, just upload their beats online, and sometimes the most interaction you'll have with them is, hey, can I use this? Yeah, sure, go ahead, credit me. All right, good talk. That's, how, uh, that's what happens a lot of times. Okay. But um, yeah. people that I have met, there's a, a producer named Till Dexist. Uh, he makes some beats uh, that I heard online, and I thought they were cool, so I contacted Instagram, and uh, I wasn't even going to use any beats at that point, but of his at that point, but I just told him that I, uh, I really enjoyed them, and I just told him to keep it up and respond to me. That was cool. Uh, same with a uh, producer I've talked about a lot recently called Caps Control. I think is one of the best producers on YouTube right now. Uh, I partially wrote about them in an article called Five Amazing Producers. I talked to them briefly. Um, yeah, the people that I've actually talked to a while for like a good amount of time was uh, Becca, who's on now my most streamed song. Uh, okay. I talked to her through, D- through Instagram DMs. We followed each other back. JJ, who I have yes. a collaborative EP with, is the man. I don't even remember how I found him on SoundCloud, but I found one of his beats on SoundCloud. I started listening to some of them, and I found one that I liked. So I messaged him and said, hey, could I use this? This is really cool. And yeah, he said I could. It, that was uh, my song, Each Drop of the Hennessy, off of the album Dark One. So yeah, he produced that one. And then I, but yeah, since I used that, I figured I'd listen to more of his, and I actually really, really enjoyed a lot of them. Like, I kept thinking, well, I kept thinking of what I wanted to do with them, and I could really feel, and it turns out he's also, like, even younger than me, which I did <laughs> not expect. He's a year younger than me. I didn't expect that for a second. Yeah, I was listening to his beats, and I really enjoyed them. It, uh, I, I was going to keep making songs out of them, but then it got to a point where I liked so many that I contacted him and said, do you want to work on this? And I, I told him my idea for an EP, and he loved the idea. We kept talking about that through the process of that, and now we're sort of just, you know, online friends. I still plan to use more of his beats in the future, and, he, you know, I support the hell out of him. Yeah, yeah I just I met him through SoundCloud, and, uh, you know, we're just uh, two underground artists that occasionally make stuff together, which is cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, there's, there's other producers, musicians that I've had casual conversations with, but, you know, a lot of the time they're just online and, you know, you don't exactly up to them much. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is kind of a funny question. All right. So how many how many times do you uh, usually have to re-record lyrics due to, let's say, mistakes or mess ups? I, it used to be uh, first three projects. It could be uh, it was never less than five times. Uh, okay. uh, and that's not including alternate takes. That's like actual mess ups. But, you know, I've gotten a lot better at pronunciation and just actually going through with it. So. Yeah. I only really have actual mess ups when there's like fast moments. That's oh. the only time there's ever like, like mess ups. In, like in your like in your song Depression. Oh well, that was also at the beginning. So yeah, I can, I can <laughs> only imagine. Took, yeah, now I can do it just off the fucking whim. Can you do it like right now? No collection obsession, addiction, depression, no crash possession, alive expression. There it we go. Happens. <laughs> but <laughs> it's after a year of practice. But yeah, uh, now I sort of just always get through it pretty decently. And, uh, but I, I do like to do multiple recordings and like pick the best one. I do like to do that. There have definitely been moments in the past where I was rushing stuff, and I'm making okay. sure I literally never do that again. All right, yeah, like that's I'd good. say uh, the last time I did that was Open Casket. Or it was, uh, I don't remember how many songs were even on that, but it was, it was a big, big project. It was like 11 or 12. And uh, I think it was actually more than that. I'm pretty sure it's my biggest one. But yeah, I, there were definitely songs on that where I really should have redone takes. Now I make sure i never ever set release dates before completing the full project yeah um so yeah uh now i sort of do if i get it perfect three or four alternate takes 
and if I mess up, you know, you just got to pick up from there. But I try, obviously, I try not to as much as I can. I'd say the last time I had some really bad mess up, mess ups was my song BoJack Horseman, which okay. is probably my fastest song to ever happen. All right, so then, all right, this next one is quite interesting as well. I originally picked choose five of your songs, but you can choose how many ever you want. So choose some of your songs and explain the meanings behind them, like what inspired you to write them. I was going to do okay. this on a podcast, but I actually have an online wheel of every single song I've ever done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I actually was going to do this, and I have a million songs, which is the song from my EP with JJ. This one is uh, overall about insecurities. All right. Um, it goes... I gotta make sure I put on a new face, and I've I, the, you get to a point where you've made so many songs you can't remember every single one. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this song is overall just about like the f- just overall anxieties and insecurities, and how a lot of people, including myself in the past, uh, have felt the need to really like disguise yourself in public situations and really like hide so many aspects of your personality your physical appearance all stuff like that like i i guess uh, my best example would be i wore pretty much only black clothing for a long time all right that was you know and you know that was definitely just uh as you could say anxiety blanket you know, that i would just wrap around myself so yeah that song's overall just about uh social anxiety and insecurities uh i i, I spin the wheel <laughs> yeah Christ, I honestly forgot I still had this bookmark. Jealousy. Well, right. it's in the title. Uh, jealousy is an open casket. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, actually, uh, there's actually a beat switch in that song, which I, once again, I should have read. I should have re-recorded it, but I didn't. But there's a beat switch in it where it sort of transitions from like calm to more aggressive. And uh, that song is honestly just sort of about a feeling of being jealous because a lot of the times, people in general they'll feel jealous for reasons they can't even explain like literally nothing is happening but you feel this anxiety and anger building inside of you because of jealousy towards something that you can't even comprehend and that's sort of just what that song's about it's it's not really i say that song is more about the feeling rather than what it actually is so these are all i I, all my songs are sad Um, i i don't know what it is I, I mean, I've definitely uh, branched out from sad music over the last while. Like, uh, I used to do, like, only sad music. Now I sort of have combinations of different stuff. But anyway, the next one that come up was uh, Beautiful Heart. And this one is actually an interesting one to come up. Okay. It's uh, on my album, Suspension Points. Something that I've done over time, not many times, but a few times, uh, which is something that's special to me. I will, like, sometimes make songs for a specific person and... Uh, no, only they know that really. So yeah, this was about this was about uh, a close friend of mine in okay. uh, early to mid 2019. So yeah, you know it's you know the title's pretty self-explanatory. You know a lot of lyrics pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes that's something I do uh, every now and then. Uh, sometimes I do it with just interludes because you know uh, it's hard. To, you know it's not always you want to make a full fledged out song about it. But yeah, that's something I do sometimes. And you know that's definitely one of the nicer things that I like about making music. Let me do one more. All right. More. Let's see what pops up. Oh, what a perfect fit. My remedy, my medicine. Okay. I'm actually going to tell the story of this song rather than the meaning of it, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was going to not put this song on the album. Oh, yeah? I was going to completely strip this song because I knew it's my song, but I'm the worst person on it. Um, okay. I still think I did all right. And, you know, I've still gotten compliments regarding my verses. But, you know, the feature on it, Becca, uh, who I've once again spoken to, she's a great singer. She's a great artist. Um, I've listened to her music on my own time. She's great at it. And, you know, just because, and, you know, like, yeah, she did great. And I thought maybe my performance wouldn't have been good enough to put it on, like, to put it under my name. But I did really enjoy the song. I, I really enjoyed the song. I thought it was a good song. So I put it on there. And boy, oh, boy, was, boy, oh, boy, I'm glad I did. Yes. So. <laughs> well, this next one's kind of more of a general one that I thought I'd, I'd uh, throw in there, which are, uh, who are some of your favorite rappers or even just, like, musical artists? And uh, what are some of your favorite video games? Yeah, uh, artists, again, I, it's weird, I used to not really listen to that much music, but then yes. when I started, I started working on music, I was really able to, like, start respecting people in the industry a lot more, because I started, you know, like, looking at lyricism and producing, and I was sort of just, I wanted to learn more about the actual craft of it, because I was getting more involved in it, and 
that is definitely widened my understanding of how much goes into it. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I listen to a lot of kinds of music. You know, some of my favorite rappers, uh, again, I like even just rap. I listen to a lot of different kinds of rap. But, um, you know, I, I've always liked uh, Artist X, um, okay. which was a, a lot of people, they either literally don't give a fuck about him or they really, really, really love him. Now, I'm not on the obsessed fan side of things. Like, I'm not going to fight every single goddamn person that says they don't like him. Like, right. some of his fans really need to calm the hell down. Um, yeah, I just like, again, like, I really respect the creativity and art that went into his music, and I really, I really do enjoy that. Same with uh, Juice World. Um, you know, I just really respect uh, his creativity and the sound that he was able to produce. Uh, but yeah, uh, Eminem, I, have, I really enjoy. Uh, he's, in my opinion, from like a technical standpoint, the best rapper. You know, what he is able to do in hip hop is unreal. But yeah, uh, and also, now that I uh, review albums, I've definitely been able to explore music a lot more. Uh, there are so many albums that I never would have bothered to listen to if uh, no one suggested them to me. So yeah, those three artists I just named were pro- are probably three of my favorites right now, but it changes all the time. Yeah. And I also listen to uh, uh, Quideca, okay. who's uh, a YouTube rapper, I guess you say, or YouTube musicians in general. I don't always have the best reputation because, you know, it's you, you sort of, I don't know, I don't even know what it is because of how big YouTube is now, but, you know, YouTubers as, in general don't get as much respect as I think they deserve. Well, a lot of the time. But yeah, like Kodeka is a YouTube rapper and he's like better than most of the mainstream, that's for sure. All right. Uh, but yeah, and then I uh, use it video games. Yeah, like because um, of like your gaming channel. I would consider myself a gamer still, but like yeah. I am very different than most people, especially most people my age. Like everybody says, PlayStation or Xbox. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and and I've 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 always been more of like a Nintendo kind of guy, um, because that's sort of just what I grew up with. Like um, you know, uh, I'd say I'd say my personal favorite video game of all time would have to be Mario Maker. Okay. Because of just how much you can do. Like yeah. there's infinite. It's it's infinite. You can do anything. So that's yeah. why I love that so much. But like, you know, separating from that. Um, I actually have. I was at, a while back. I was actually going to do a top ten best Mario games video, but yeah, okay. but, yeah. But like the Mar- the Mario series really is like it's a very special place in my heart. Like Mario Brothers three is one of my favorites. A Mario three D Land and three D World. Uh, those are some of my favorites. Outside of those, um, I-, I like the Halo series quite a bit. Definitely, okay. it's, uh, I'd say I'd say Halo two is probably my favorite Halo game. Uh, the Smash Brothers games, all of them are great. Uh, but yeah, like uh, what I did with the my YouTube channel a lot was I played a lot of online games. I mean, like Fortnite, Call of Duty Online. I mean, literally just any Flash game I could find. Is what yeah, I exactly. Play. And you've done that too. It's like your uh, mini clip. Videos. Yeah, that one. Like, there's a lot of underappreciated games that are online. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's really cool how much there's like stuff for free online. So yeah, that's what I did a lot. Like games I played on my channel, uh, Roblox. Happy Wheels. I played Minecraft too. I like Minecraft. I I'm I'm definitely considering getting back into that. But yeah, Happy Wheels was one of them. Earn to Die Two specifically. It's one of the best online free games ever, in my opinion. Video games are all about enjoyment. I don't personally enjoy a lot of the competitive games that are out nowadays. Like, I'm not against you know first person shooters and games like that. I play games for fun, not to be the best. You can't go onto a game of Fortnite where like everybody tries their best in a game of Fortnite. Like, I don't like. I just I'm just trying to play casually, fam. But then they start building as high as humanly possible to kill you. Yeah. That's why I don't like. That's why I don't like games like that anymore. Really. Like it's just I want to have fun playing it. I don't want to have to be. I don't want to have to take it super seriously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those are some of my favorite games. I definitely experiment with games. You know, in quarantine, I've actually 100 percented multiple games, and they're all oh, Mario. Wow. Um, I went, back to, I went back to play Mario Kart 7. Nice. I got three stars on every single possible option. Wow. But every single star coin in New Super Mario Bros. 2. Oh, that's pretty every epic. Every star coin in Super Mario 3D Land. You know, like, the thing is, yeah, I am fully aware that I'm not, like, you know, I'm in, I'm just finishing the ninth grade. So, you know, I'm in the age range where, you know, everybody else decides what's cool and what isn't. And, like, you know, Xbox, PlayStation is the cool thing. You know, all of these M-rated games are the cool things. I just play what I enjoy. I don't care about fitting in. I don't care about... I don't care if I'm the cool kid or the nerdy kid. I don't care. I just do what I like to do to have fun. That's just, that's just me. Okay, pretty good. All right, then. So these next few questions are actually about your series, like your story-told series. So uh, specifically about your oh, most yeah. recent one that's 
going to be coming out, which is titled Imagine, I believe. Um, so if you, if you uh, wouldn't mind telling, uh, what will the, the uh, main storyline be of your series Imagine? Uh, again, I do plan. I do want to make it in the future. Like I do yes. still want to make it, so that's why I'm not going to spoil like a whole lot of it. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. You know, I will say though, the story it still what the Watch of Worlds was. Yes. You know, it's like I, I'm I'm altering some things, but like the story itself is still the same. I'll just do a quick rundown because they're a lot bigger than me. It's been a couple of years since this happened. So, uh, back when I did my story told series, I started this one up called The Watch of Worlds. Basically, what it's still up actually on a channel called Channel KTA. The first three episodes are still up. Uh, there was this uh, watch, and if you if you activated it, it would uh, it would transport you to this. Um, you know, like a virtual world, I guess you could say, like a, an entirely different dimension. Uh, you know, it's, it was like it was it was sort of like a real life video game, go into the video game sort of thing. It was it was a, it was an interesting concept that was definitely hard to edit. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I only did three episodes of it, and I left it behind. And I still want to remake that series and finish it under the name Imagine. But yeah, uh, the story is still practically the same. I'm still going to be playing the same character. William is still, would still play the same character. I will no. I would only be playing one character. That would definitely be the biggest change. I would only be playing one character. Okay, nice. Um, it's just with that, like I do have it written. Like that's one thing that I don't know if I've even told you. The whole thing is written. Scripts nice. are written. I would like to do that as well. So you know, like all the actors I would need, they can like look it over per episode. Yeah, like it's written, and I want to do it, and I do really want to do it, but. And here's the thing, if I'm going to make it, I want it to be the best thing I could do. I want it to be the best thing I've ever done. All right. uh, so I would put a lot of effort into it, and I still want to do that. But that's yeah. why I literally can't give a date, I can't give a time, because I literally have no idea, because I'm still doing a lot of other things. All right. But I do want it to happen, and I do plan for it to happen in the future. All right, very good answer. We are looking forward to it. Uh, past series has, has like mostly just been you and William, just like as actors. So, um, who will be? Who will some of the cast members be? Will it just be you two, or will you include some more people in on this one? That's what's made this process the most difficult for the series. Is I don't have other actors. But okay. I, I in order for it to be what I want it to be, I need to have other actors. Um, but um, you know. Ninth grade, given the Rona, I'm not trying to get you demonetized. I know you have over uh, you have over a thousand subs, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, with what's going on, you know, the last year has been pretty wild. But next year, I will be going back into uh, a drama class. So if I can find people there, uh, you know, I connect with and I think would fit great, that'd be amazing. Uh, but also, yeah, if I can just ha- find friends, you know, I go to an art school, so if I can just find friends that could play this part, that would be amazing. But, you know, that's been that's easily the hardest part of this process, because I want to have actors that fit the roles the best they can. But also, but, you know, it's and then there's also the issue of, you know, how far they could be, how much time it could take, things like that. So, yeah. yeah, it's 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 complicated, especially, you know, like I'm not a big pro- I don't have a big production behind me. I'm just trying to I just got to work with what I got. So, but, you know, uh, it I do think it'll work out eventually. And I say when, not if. I know when it does exist. It'll be one of the best things I've ever done. All right, so the next question is also about, like, your actors. So uh, what was it like work- working with uh, some of your past series actors, like uh, William or even some other people that have made uh, some appearances in- within uh, yeah, your series? The, the, yeah, there has been a few. It's been mainly me and William. And honestly, um, I doubt he'll watch this because he doesn't care about me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um <laughs> No, like, I have to give him a lot of credit for, like, how much he did improve over our few series. Now, the difference between when we first started and when we ended off was, you know, it was, I, I was definitely impressed by how much he improved. But um, it's, it's, it's weird working with other people because I sort of... It's, I, I'm going to sound very power-hungry, and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. But I like to be, you know, since it, at the end of the day it is still my project, I like to be as in control as I can be with what's going on. Okay. And that's sort yeah. of what's definitely made things complicated at times. But, you know, again, I've never worked with that many people. So, you know, it's all, it's usually been pretty chill because usually it's just me and William and we just do what we want to do. 
So, yeah, you know, uh, the only time I can ever think of that it was frustrating, and I'll throw him. I have no problem throwing him under the bus. All right, that's fine. Kid, I, no, I'm kidding. He would admit it, too. He, it's fine. Uh, it's just, uh, I'd say the beginning of the Personality Series 2 on Channel KTA was very difficult because he didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, like, uh, say the first half of the first season, he wasn't really feeling it. You know, fair enough to him. I get it. But, you know, I just wanted to get it done. And we got it done. So yeah, he just basically just didn't want to do it, and that was the whole story? Yeah, that's the only time I can ever really think of that. Okay. Uh, something didn't necessarily go as good as it could. But again, you know, he's practically my brother. We're good. It's not like we fought or anything. All right, nice. <laughs> I don't have enough experience yet to have much of a story for that. Okay, so I think we're going to have to actually skip this next question, because, like, you already answered it, because I asked, when will Imagine be released, your new series? But you uh, said yeah. you, re- <laughs> you really didn't know, so... Yeah. All right, so that leaves us to the uh, final question, and I think it's a good one to uh, end off on, which is, uh, what would you do if one day you became really popular? Like, say you had, like, 100,000 wow. YouTube subscribers or followers. Hey, I, I just, it just occurred to me how weird I am with how I, I act humble despite having nothing. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not kidding when I say, you know, I have a small audience right now, but if, you know, any audience I ever have, I just want to make sure I spread positivity I don't have influence on people right now. Like, I just simply don't. Uh, but if I ever did, I would make sure that I influence people in the best way I can. I honestly, I can't even say, like, exactly what I would do with my life, what I would do with my time if I was, like, 10 times, 100 times, a million times more popular than I am now. I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot to um, think about. But, you know, I would, I would never in a million years take it for granted. I would never in a million years forget how I started. I would never in a million years stop trying to spread positivity as much as I can. But, you know, of course, I don't do what I do for fame or money. I do it because I love it. So I would make sure that I still love what I do, but I would be ever so grateful for what I had achieved. Yeah, um, all right, well. Yeah, well, well, only time will tell where, where I'll be. Yes, very good. Um, so that's all 20 questions, and I actually do have, I did include a bonus question. And by oh, okay. that, and by that, I mean just one that I really wanted you to talk about, which is um, uh, describe your experience voice acting for Yo Budman's The Seven Days. Oh, hell yeah! <laughs> um, I doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it has, I guess. Yeah. Twenty eighteen. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's when the first one was. I honestly don't know what made me want to do it so bad. I, I wish I had an answer for why I wanted to do it so bad. I don't. I just really wanted to play my own character. I guess it's just because. But yeah, I, I want to play my own character really bad, and I know your Budman is like, God damn it, how hard is it going to be to get him on time? I think I delivered okay. I think I did all right. No, you did, you, but you did great. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just uh, I wanted to play my own character, and uh, one memory that's coming to mind is uh, one of my bloopers. Was, uh, I said forest instead of fortress. <laughs> yeah, uh, because exactly. uh, I didn't see what the scene would be before recording. Uh, yeah. So for some reason, my mind read it as forest. Who are those people and what are they coming, why are they coming to my forest? And yeah, that, that yeah. wasn't uh, I wish I still right. had that saved. I don't think I even had that saved. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, it, was a, it, was, it was an interesting experience because you know, I'd never done that before. And, uh, you know, it's, and what's really funny is uh, the videos of yours that I'm in are some of the more, mo- most popular videos that I'm part of. But uh, yeah, it was it was it was cool, and I I'm I'm happy it happened, and it was different for me. And you know, I've again I have done a lot of media projects, uh, and voice acting. That's the only, that's really the only time I ever really did it. So that's nice. kind of cool. All right. Well, we're glad you enjoyed it. All right. So yeah, that is all the questions for uh, Dark Isaac's interview, guys. And uh, yeah, I hope you all found it interesting. And uh, Dark Isaac, I hope you uh, liked all these questions that I picked out. Uh, thanks I'm for... impressed by a few of them, actually. Really? Yeah, especially <laughs> yeah. the the Forgotten Albums one. I yeah, think that's that one. Good. Yeah. You know, like I fi- I figured you looked at the website around that time. But yeah, like, I, I did. Thought that, I thought that memory would go poof. Oh, no, well, it, was, yeah. it did not. <laughs> uh, well then, I guess if there's any final words that you have to say, then uh, you can go ahead. Um. Well, sh- uh, it's, it's, it's it's his it's his channel, but shouts to your bud man taking me for taking me on this interview. I appreciate anyone that's supported me up to this point because, you know, again, me and your Budman have known each other since my first channel, and a lot of things have changed over time. Uh, if you want to find me anywhere, it's uh, Dark Isaac, where I have my music, and also I'm on Instagram at Dark Isaac if you want to stay updated. And uh, yeah, where I do things outside of music is just called My Name is Isaac, as 
very low views and subs, but it's just what I do for fun if you care about the, the, the person making the music rather than the music. So, yeah. All right, guys. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, interview with Dark Isaac. I hope you like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.